Scrolling along with Susan here. I'm back for my third video on musical instruments. Now the first one, if you remember, was a rasp. The second one was a thumb piano or a kalimba. And this one is going to be a tongue drum. And here's a picture of a very small tongue drum. I'll be making mine much bigger. And this is out of Popular Mechanics Scroll Saw Fundamentals, if you're interested in getting that book. It's a bit of an older book. Now, there are a lot of different ways to make tongue drums. The resonance chamber can be three quarters of an inch thick, a quarter of an inch thick. Different materials have different sounds. And of course, whatever you use for the top for the actual cutting of the tongue drum is going to give you a different sound as well. So I'm going to be experimenting here and we'll see what we come up with. I'll be using cherry for the top and western red cedar for the sides. And I haven't decided what I'm going to use for the bottom yet, but we'll get to that. Now to cut the top of the tongue drum, you'll need either a saber saw or a scroll saw. Now to make this tongue drum, you really need to have the basic skill level of making a box because that's basically what this is. It's a box with a tongue drum, slit drum cut on top of it. So uh, before you continue, make sure that you are comfortable with making boxes. I'm taking my rough cut piece of cherry lumber, cutting it to size, running it through my jointer and my planer to get the final size that I'm going to be using for the top of my drum. I am so excited about this piece of cherry. I just finished planing it. It started out at one and an eighth inch thick. Now it's down to three quarter inch thick. I have not sanded it super smooth yet, but there's very few imperfections and it will be great for the top of my tongue drum. Cutting all my pieces to the exact dimensions. I have my basic pieces cut. I have two five and a half by 10 inch pieces for the ends, and I have two five and a half by 18 inches pieces for the sides. My attempt at interlocking my boards. Well, there's been a change of plans with my box. I was going to make it nice interlocking edges, and it turned out to be a disaster. So I'm, in order to use the same pieces, I'm making it a little bit smaller. So the long pieces are 16 and 3 quarters long. These pieces are 10 inches long. They're all five inches deep. And I'm going to make a simple box. Here I'm using a box clamp. It's about 25 bucks. It really helps you ensure those 90 degree angles. And then gluing up the top and letting it dry. And I have two pieces of three quarter inch thick pine. And I need to glue them together because they're not wide enough to do the bottom. Make sure you use an ample amount of glue to ensure that nice, tight fit. Now it's time to sand, sand, and sand. All the pieces are sanded. And what took me the longest is I had to cut in a quarter inch deep all around the inside of the top of the box and the bottom of the box so that it fits down in and is a pretty tight fit before I glue up. All right, here I am with my top piece. This is my favorite part. It's the scroll sewing part. So I have already routed the back of my cherry wood so that it will fit nicely into the box. I put blue painter's tape down on the top and I have my pattern that I sprayed with glue and attached it to the blue painter's tape. And the reason I use blue painter's tape is that it will, when I'm done um, doing my scroll sawing, I can just pull it right off very easily. This is a pattern I found online. It's just a free pattern. There's a lot of them out there. It's got 12 keys in it. And I have to drill a hole for an entry hole. And I can do a couple different holes, but I tell you, one will probably be able to get to all of these keys. So I'm going over to my um, drill press now and drilling my hole. Always use sacrificial pieces of backing board when you're drilling holes so that you won't have tear out in your piece on the bottom. I am using a Pegas Blade 9 inch MGT blade. You can use a 7 or 9 inch blade. You're going to want 
a bit of a gap between all of your keys so they don't rub up against them. So you can use a larger blade for this. My machine has a foot pedal with it, so I will keep it in the on position and operate my machine with my foot pedal. One thing that I wanted to mention is before you start, make sure that your blade is exactly 90 degrees to your table or you could be taking off more on the top than on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this big chunk of empty space so I can get to all of the keys a little bit easier. I've only done two of these and I wanna make sure I'm giving enough of a gap in between keys to make a proper sound. So I'm gonna go over and give it a test first. Nothing is glued down yet, so I've got to hold it tight so I can feel the and hear the vibration. That's two different pitches, and it sounds like I've cut enough gap. So I'm gonna do the rest the same way. Well, it looks like I'm gonna to have to change three blades because I didn't quite make it through this grouping and I could kind of smell like there was burning on the cherry and I was pushing just a tiny bit. So I said, okay, time to stop and change blades. Blades are inexpensive, so don't try to push it to the limit to get a little bit more life out of. It's better, especially if you're doing a nice big project like this, or any project actually, you don't want to ruin it. So it's better to change blades and use three blades than try to use two. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that you could use a jigsaw to cut this out and it would be quicker but it would be a lot rougher and a lot more repair work to make it smooth. Look how smooth this is. Very little sanding, very little repair work on the bottom. Okay, I'm done with the major cutting, and then I need to go back and clean some areas up. I have the whole thing cut out, but I need to tweak it a little bit. These 10 and 8 over here sound like they need a little bit more room. So I'm just drawing a couple areas and I'm gonna go back and cut. The blue painter's tape comes off so easily right here. But then I take an odorless paint thinner and give it a nice wipe to get rid of any the extra residue before gluing the top finally to the base or the box. At this point, the top is glued on and I'm going to be sanding, rounding over all of the edges and the sides. Notice that the bottom is not glued on because the way that I tune it is going to be through here. I found that I needed to put another board on either end there for a little bit thicker sides and a little bit better resonance. The top has been glued to the middle part. The bottom is not attached so I can adjust the keys from underneath. I'm ready to start tuning my keys. I have downloaded P-A-N-O Tuner, Pano Tuner online for free which will give me the note of each key and then I'm going to have to adjust it underneath to either raise or lower the pitch. I've made a copy of my pattern with the numbers on them and added my masking tape with the numbers and I've also done it on the reverse so when I adjust I don't get confused on which key is which. I'm going to be using the mallets that I have made in a previous video if you're interested in knowing how to make it. It's basically using a quarter inch dowel rod, bouncy balls, drilling a hole and gluing them together. That looks to be an F. I'm going to write down on a piece of paper that that's closest to an F and go all the way through all of them. 
so in the bottom section I have my number five key and it's registering as an F and I need to make it a G so I need to take away material from the top part of the key if I needed to lower it I would take away material from the bottom part now I know a lot of people use Forstner bits I don't have one so I'm going to be using a half inch drill to take away material this process was very lengthy I think I might change the size of the keys next time I need to go a little bit deeper it has raised it a little bit, but I need to raise it a little bit more. I'm getting a buzzing sound on my big keys, so I'm putting another piece of wood on the sides in the bottom so that I can try to alleviate that. Now, if it doesn't work out, I'm only putting them in with screws, so if it doesn't work out, then I can always remove them. still buzzing. These two metal ones are buzzing. I know it's not my idea to put screws in the top part of this, but if I want this functional, I'm going to have to do that. Because when I put pressure on this end here, the buzzing goes away. I put the screws from the top down in, but it was kind of ugly, so I countersunk them and then put a little bit of a dowel rod in there and then sawed it off so it's a nice smooth top. Here are my two tongue drums before putting mineral oil on them. So on the left you have a cherry top and western red cedar sides, and at the bottom I'm just using pine. On the right it's all poplar. On the top and on the sides and then at the bottom I will also use pine. The top on the left is three quarters inch thick, the top on the right is only a quarter inch thick. It has been over a month of trying to put these together. I've run into so many difficulties and I've learned so much. So my original tongue drum pattern that I cut out is about 24 inches long. I think that's too long. I am going to put a box to it and see what I can adjust and see what kind of sound I can come up with. This one, which is made out of cherry, it's three quarters inch thick, the top. I think the next time I'll do maybe five eighths to a half inch thick to get a different sound. I also want to be more exact on trying to get the key note, the sound that I want on each one of them. So I need to do some math on that. And this one is a quarter inch thick top and I think this one actually sounds the best. Tell you one thing I certainly do respect the craftsmen out there that can perfect this tongue drum to be used in musical settings and I am going to strive to get to that point as for now I made two tongue drums that are kind of fun to play with but I am going to strive for that greatness hey if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button See you next time.